Amen. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A very warm welcome to all of you joining us this morning in this congregational and live streamed service, televised also on television. Here at the cathedral, our sign language interpreter is Miss Susan Thuo. KBC and TV 47 and on our online platforms we have Mr. Gray Ngugi. I am Ivan Somolo leading the service. With me is our preacher Mrs. Lucy Waruingi who is a leader here at the cathedral. Provost Sami is with us in the service. May we pray as we begin. Lord we give you thanks for gathering us as your children from across the corners of this country and the world to congregate and offer our worship to you in this solemn service. Would you accept the worship we now offer to you and would you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please do note that uh, there are a few protocols you are required to observe during this service. Kindly keep your mask on. Uh, and worn properly at all times. Do ensure that your hands are thoroughly washed or sanitized before and after the service. Do ensure that you keep requisite social distance and do not move from one seat to another. Please avoid any physical contact with anyone like handshakes or hugging and do not share materials with anyone. We ask you to follow the guidance of the ushers during and after the service. Please do note that the facilities for restrooms are in the auditorium. We will be asking you to bring your offerings through our online platform. But please, if you have your cash that you're not able to pay online, there will be um, an usher here who will collect physical offer tree. However, our main mode of collection is the online payment. We ask you that you do not visit any other facility during or after this service. And we'll be giving more guidelines at the end. The Lord be with you. Today is the 18th Sunday after Trinity in our church calendar. The cathedral here has dedicated this month to praying for children so that they can know Christ and reach out to others with the love of Christ. We know that children are a gift and a blessing from God. We spend a lot of time and resources for their sake so that we may expose them to various life skills to help them to grow and become the best they can be, taking up every available opportunity in the midst of our busy lives we are reminded that praying for them will help them to stay alert, to discern God's will for their lives, and gain strength to stand against the attacks of the enemy. We want to ask you to kindly go to our website and download the prayer calendar and spend time each day as guided in that calendar, praying for our children and our teenagers, and also for our ongoing a CTC project, and in particular, the upcoming fundraiser on the 8th of November.
Amen. Beloved in Christ, we join together this morning the people of God, drawn by His Spirit, longing for His Word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share His glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in His love and be sent in His peace. We are heirs of the Father, renewed in the Spirit. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just. And he will forgive us our sins. So let us say to kneel and confess them to our Father. Together saying, Eternal Father, God of our ancestors, before your power all things tremble, but through your Son we approach your throne. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness and light in our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive, the lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Let us join in saying the collect for the 18th Sunday after Trinity together saying, Loving Father, we thank you for teaching us through your Son, Jesus, that the way to greatness is through servanthood. We thank you that Jesus taught us this by his own example. Help us like Jesus to serve others selflessly, no matter the cost, to the glory of his holy name. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. Let us praise the Lord. join with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout our world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the dead. Sit for prayer. To as a kuketi for Ajilia Maomi. Mungu mwenye enzi na uishie milele katika utulivu na kujirudi tuwa okolewa katika ukimia na tumaini tuwa pata nguvu utupe baraka za kufanya amani na furaha ya kutafuta haki Tuondole mioyoni mwetu dhiki na tabu zote uyafanye maisha yetu yashuhudie uzuri wa amani yako. E Bwana utusikie. Ulilinde na kuliongoza kanika, kanisa lako takatifu kwenye chemichemi ya kweli. Ulitawale na kulisaidia liseme ukweli katika upendo wakati unaofaa na wakati usiofaa. E Bwana utusikie. Tunamkabili mikononi mwako askofu wetu mkuu Jackson pamoja na maaskofu wetu na wachungaji, mashemasi na wahudumu wengine wa kanisa lako. Wajalie roho wako mtakatifu ili wakutumikie kwa imani na kwa ushujaa bila uoga au mapendeleo. E Bwana utusikie. Upende kuyaongoza mataifa yote ya ulimwengu yaweze kuishi pamoja kwa amani na roho na kuheshimiana na kuvumiliana. Iweze kukua kati ya mataifa na watu wote. E Bwana utusikie. Upende kumuongoza rais wetu Uhuru naibu wake William pamoja na viongozi wote wa nchi katika wa nchi katika njia za haki, amani na umoja. Tuomba kuweko na amani ndani na nje ya nchi yetu ili watu wote katika eneo hili waishi kwa uelewano na wafurahie ujirani mwema. E Bwana utusikie. Upende kuwa upende kuwa ruzuku maskini wanaoteswa wenye tabu wafungwa na walio kizuizini wakimbizi na wote walio hatarini ili wapate kufarijika na kulindwa 
e, bwana utusikie tuomba kwa ajili ya wagonjwa na wote wanaoishi na mapigo mazito waweze kufarijika katika mateso yao uwawezeshe kuweka tumaini lao kwako ili wapate amani inayopita fahamu zote e bwana utusikie tunaomba kwa ajili ya madaktari wanasayansi watafiti wanaotumia masaa mengi katika maabara wakitafuta tiba ya magonjwa e bwana wape subira Tusaidie kwa rehema e bwana katika sala na maombi yetu haya uielekeze njia ya utumishi wako kwenye wokovu wa milele ili katika mabadiliko yote na hatari zote za maisha haya walindwe siku zote kwa neema yako na msaada wako kwa Yesu Kristo bwana wetu Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 43 beginning to read from verse 14 Isaiah chapter 43 beginning to read from verse 14 This is what the Lord says Your redeemer the holy one of Israel for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ship in which they took pride I am the Lord your holy one Israel's creator your king This is what the Lord says He who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses the army and the reinforcements together and they lay there never to rise again extinguished snuffed out like a wick Forget the former things Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise this is the word of the lord second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5 beginning to read at verse 8 Ephesians chapter 5 beginning to read at verse 8 For you were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord Live as children of light for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness righteousness and truth and find out what pleases the Lord Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them For it is shameful even to mention what is disobedient to do in secret but everything exposed by the light becomes visible for it is light that makes everything visible this is why it is said wake up sleeper rise from the dead and christ will shine on you be very careful then how you live not as unwise but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil this is the word of the lord
Let us pray as we stand. Lord, we thank you that you are present among us. We thank you that you have given us the grace to be here again in another day. We thank you for those present in this sanctuary and those worshiping from their homes and other places on the virtual platforms and ask that, Lord, your Holy Spirit would visit with each one of us and that your word would be well spoken in our hearts and that the meditation of my heart and the, and the meditation of your word in my heart would be pleasing unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. We want to welcome all of you again to this service at All Saints Cathedral. Um, those who have been able to come to the in-person service and those who are watching on the various platforms at home or wherever they would be, we thank you for tuning in and being here with us as we look at the theme that we started last week on new beginnings. Today, the 10th of October, is the 18th Sunday after Trinity at this cathedral. And in this series, which began last week, Reverend Evans Omolo, the assistant provost, ably took us through the fact that we need to start by letting go of the past, that a new beginning starts with us shedding off what has been our past, what has held us back, how we let go of that past, training our eyes to see what God sees, disciplining our mind to look at things differently, and using our tongues to confess the positive, and ensuring our hearts are protected from the negative. And with that great foundation, we now launch on to today, where our topic is making use of today, seizing the day and seizing the opportunity that God has given us. My name is Lucy Waroenge, and by the grace of God, uh, serving as a lay reader in this cathedral, and really honored to be able to share his word with us today. So here we are today, a new day, a new week, and it is important for us to reflect and ask ourselves, why is it that today is important? We talked about leaving back the baggage of, of yesteryears, the things that have weighed us down, but why should we focus on today as a special component of new beginnings? There is a quote that has been said, that yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. The Lord has given us a present of a day called today. None of us seated here today or seated at home knew whether we would be here today because none of us is in charge of whether we live or we die. Many went to bed and did not wake up. So indeed, today is a present, a special gift that God has given any of us who is alive, and therefore, today counts. You need to live out your today as a special gift from God. Remembering also that life is fleeting, and life is short, and the clock is running. Many times you hear people saying, what's happening to time? The days seem to be going faster. It's October already. We're almost in December. Can you believe we've been in this corona period for seven months? Suddenly, time never seems to stop. It doesn't matter when you have less things to do or more things to do. Time is always running. And time waits for no man. And in the Bible, God also speaks to us about today. In Matthew 6.34, Jesus says, So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17, the Bible says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make profit. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If it is the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this and that. Really pointing down again that we know nothing about tomorrow. We can only do what God will enable us and will us to do. In Hebrews 4, 7, the writer calls, us, calls out to all those who are listening to God's word and says, today, if you hear your, his voice, do not harden your hearts. This is what he told the Israelites when he was taking them through the wilderness and asking that they would listen to God and obey him and not harden their hearts. This is what God is saying to us today. 
if you hear God's voice, even through this service today, do not harden your heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, At the acceptable time, I listened to you, and on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day for salvation. And finally, Hebrews 3.13 says, But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is called today. We know that none of you, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So the Lord puts a high premium on us responding to today with the priority it deserves and the seriousness that it needs to be accorded. Because God speaks today about the, what he expects of us in each day. Our second reading from Ephesians, in the verses 15 and 16, the Bible says, Be careful how you live. Do not live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So we want to reflect on what does it mean to make use of every opportunity? What does it mean to, for us to make use of today? What does it mean for us to seize the moment that we would not lose what God has for us today as he gives us a new beginning in this season? So Paul writing in Ephesians evidently wants us to recognize that one of the reasons we need to make the most of every opportunity is because the days are evil. But what are those evil days? And it's important we acknowledge the evil days in which we live. And I'm sure all of us can list a whole litany of things that we see as evil in our world today. Some of us, I dare say, may even say this is the most evil period in history. And when you look back through history, the reality is that there's always been days that are considered dark and evil. If someone asked you, which was the worst year in human history that was most evil, what would be your guess? I found different references to what people thought would be the worst day in history. For example, in 13... 47. That was the year of the Black Death that seriously hit Europe, and millions died. But then there's the Holocaust between 1941 and 1945, when there was state-sponsored murder of six million European Jews. Indeed, that was a dark, evil time of history. Or would it be 1918, 1918 when there was a pandemic flu that killed over 100 million people? Or perhaps it would be 2001 for those in America, 9-11, when the Twin Tower terrorist attack killed 3,000 people and completely terrorized the nation and the world. But closer to our reality, perhaps we may say 2020 is the worst year in history because of the coronavirus pandemic that has not only affected millions, but is globally felt across everywhere in the world. So I think we all get the point that evil is with us everywhere and at any time. We will live in evil days and people have lived in evil days. We all confront evil every day of our, every day of our lives. And we are living at a time when the battle between good and evil is still raging and getting worse. And Paul then says this is important that we redeem this time because of these evil days. Because these evil days create Desperation. People get desperate about what to do. People are tempted to despair because of the evil days. People are tempted to give up. People are tempted to say, we can't do it. My business cannot flourish. There's too much corruption. The economy has collapsed. I cannot move on with my life. I'm not getting on with my spouse. I'm estranged with my family. I cannot move on. I don't have a parent. I'm an orphan. We can really be pulled down by the weight of the evilness around us. But we have a chance in this new beginning to say, but what about today? What does God give me today that I can be? What opportunities are there for us to use in this new beginning? Looking at the dictionary begin meaning of opportunity, it says that opportunity is a combination of circumstances favorable for the purpose or the situation. A combination of circumstances which I call God incidences that come together for a purpose or for a situation. And there's a Roman poet by the name of Horace who wrote a poem in Latin. And in Latin, the last line of his poem says, Cape diem, 
quam minimum credula postero. And it means seize the day, carpe diem, seize the day. And the Latin translation actually means pluck the day because this is what you have. Pluck it and take it in your hands and enjoy life while you can because today is the day you have. You and I only have today and we're admonished to seize every opportunity that this day brings. Each season brings about unique opportunities and we should not remain idle. We should not be indifferent. We should not be illogical or elusive or defensive because those divine opportunities that come do so occasionally accorded to us by God. That in his master plan over your life, God will orchestrate opportunities into your life. And so the seizing of the opportunity is not towards evil, as we know some corrupt people do, but it is seizing the opportunity to have a full, abundant life as God would have you have. There's a writer who said that opportunity is found opening the door when I am at the door knocking. We need to be at that door of opportunity for opportunity to find us. And I'd like us to look at five elements of what makes us able to make the most of every opportunity. The things we should be so that each day, today, is the most, the best day of our lives yet. Number one, we need to be people who live with purpose. We need to know where we are going. And from next week, the Provost will be expounding about setting our plans for the future in God's timing. Some of us wake up each day, especially if it's a Monday, with a feeling of, good Lord, you mean it's morning? And yet God would have us say, good morning, Lord, what a wonderful day. But many times, because the purpose is not clear to us, because we are not sure why we are waking up, we are dreading the day, we look at it with dread and not as an opportunity. And yet you and I know that there are people who are living life passionately, engaged, meaningfully. And that's what God expects of us, to live purposeful life. God has something in store for you that is according to his plan for you. He does not intend you to live a mournful life of drudgery or a day that is totally a drag. If you remain focused on God's goals for you, you can walk according to God's plan for you. When Paul says each of us should live carefully, not as foolish people, King James says we should live circumspectly, circumspectly, meaning we are being cautious in how we are living. We're not just being careless and taking anyhow in any decision. And we're reminded of Nehemiah, who was in exile and was troubled by the wall of Jerusalem that had broken down. And he wanted an opportunity to go and help repair the wall of Jerusalem so that the people would go there and worship the Lord as they did. And when Nehemiah prayed and said, I would like an opportunity to go back and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, he goes to the presence of King Ataxas where he was serving as a cupbearer and the king saw that he was downcast. And the king asked him, what is your request? And Nehemiah answers, this is in Nehemiah chapter two, verse four to 10. If it seems good to the king, your servant, if your servant has found favor in your sight, send me to the city of Judah where my ancestors are that I may be re rebuild it. And God answered Nehemiah because Nehemiah took the opportunity he had to seek favor with the king. And the king not only granted him his request, but gave him letters for safe passage and for the resources that he needed. You and I can live as people of purpose. And to know our purpose, we need to look in the scriptures. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do we know where we are going? Do we know what God has created us for? Number two, on being people who are making the most of today, we need to be still in God's presence. We need to know that life can be a rush, but we need to slow down and pause. And I think if nothing else, the corona period has forced us to pause. And my prayer, even as we look and seek to get back to normality, is that the lessons we learned during that pause period will carry us through, especially being still before the Lord. Because sometimes we are living life too fast, making too many snap judgments, too many hasty decisions. We are speaking too soon. We are getting angry too quickly. We are reacting too fast. We are answering the question before we hear it. We are building high before we go deep. And God is saying, be still and know that I am God. Because there's many things in your life you cannot control. But if you are still, you will have the comfort of knowing that God is in control. 
And when we know God is in control, that is enough. And we know he can do more than we can with our worrying. Number three, be intentional about how you use your time. Don't waste your time. Don't undervalue your time. Invest it. Understand the season that God has brought into your life at this time. Every season has opportunities, but those opportunities should be seized at the right season. In our children's school when they were younger, in trying to get them to not waste time and to be prioritized as they ought, the teachers would tell them, and they would come and recite the same at home, you need to be at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. Because children can be at the right place and at the right time, but doing the wrong thing. Or they could be doing the right thing at the wrong time, having lunch at 2.30 during a lesson. And this is what God wants us to do with our time. What is the right thing I need to be doing with my time at this point? Am I wasting my time on things that don't matter? Am I pursuing things that I think are important because my neighbor is pursuing them? Because my family is pushing me? Because my colleague has said it's a good idea? Use your time wisely according to the plan that God has called over your life. What's another way to make the most use of today? Number three, to be a blessing in the people around you. Each of us was created to be a blessing to someone. We should not imagine that God is adding days to our lives just because we need them. I believe God is adding days to our life because someone out there needs you. God is blessing you financially, not so that you raise your standard of living, but so that you raise your standard of giving. God wants us in this day today to bless someone. Who are the people around you that need a word of encouragement, that need to be visited, that need to be called up and checked on? In Colossians verse four, chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. How you live and bless others will show non-believers that indeed there is a God and that God cares because they see you caring, they see God caring through you. Proverbs 11.25 says, He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. So be a blessing to others around you because God will also bless and refresh you. Be a blessing by sharing the gospel with others. Reach out to those who are hopeless and living in total loss of life with no hope for the future and show them the pathway of Christ. Number five, be at peace with all men, as for long as it depends on you. Romans 12, 8, 18 says, as long as it depends on you, be at peace with everyone. Do not leave your today being bitter with people who have hurt you, being upset with those who are not doing what you want, or people who did things that, uh, that were injurious to you. Remember, Christ was hurt by many, but he forgave them and made peace for them through his death on the cross. So even you and I should not go around life being touchy about everything, upset about everyone who's not enabling us to live our life because that steals our peace. And Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, make every effort to live at peace with everyone and see to it you do not fall into the sin of bitterness because bitterness will rob your joy of today. So as we walk in our purpose, as we be still before God, as we are intentional about how we use our time, as we intentionally decide to be a blessing to others and be at peace with others, we will begin enjoying the day and the opportunity that God has given us. But there are many barriers, we all know this, that keep us from making the most of every opportunity, from seizing the day that God has given us. And I'd like to share three red flags that are the barriers that would keep us from making the most of today. And they are in three Ps. Number one, procrastination of actions. When we procrastinate what we know we need to do, then we do not fulfill the opportunity we, for, that we have for that day. Benjamin Franklin once said, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Many of us know the regret that people live with when someone passes on. When you lose a loved one, people are regretting that I should have spent time with them. I should have visited them. We planned to take a holiday. I planned to knit for them a sweater. I planned to help them with a project. But they are gone and the opportunity is no more. Do not put off tomorrow what you should do today. And it's ironic that the things that matter most to us are the things sometimes we put off, like spending time with family or being there for someone who really needs us. And God is reminding us, 
that we need to be sure we don't procrastinate the things that will enable us to make the most of today's opportunity. A poet called Maud Mola wrote a poem, and in his last paragraph he said, for all the sad words of tongue or pen that have ever been said, the saddest are these, it might have been. Statements of regret, it might have been this way if I had not procrastinated. So red flag number one, procrastination of actions will keep us from enjoying and living to the fullest the day God has given us. Number two, paralysis of fear. We fear the unknown. We fear the size of the battle. We look at the task. It looks impossible. God has given you an opportunity to start a, a business, but you feel inadequate. You feel you don't have the resources. God has given you an opportunity to seek reconciliation with your spouse or with your children or with your parents, but you fear they will reject you. And a lot like when you are in the wilderness or in the park and you meet a deer in the dark, if your headlights are on and the deer is, or the antelope is crossing the road, it freezes. And yet that is one of the swiftest animals in the savannas. But the reason it freezes is that the light blinds it and fear strikes it and it cannot move. So fear will paralyze us from being able to make the most of the opportunities God gives us. Moses was afraid when he was asked by the Lord to go to Pharaoh and ask him to let the Israelites go. Moses said, I can't. I stammer. I'm not able. I'm not eloquent. I cannot face Pharaoh. And God said, okay, Moses, I will help you. I'll give you a helping hand. And he gave him Aaron. But the peculiar thing about this story, after God gave Aaron to Moses, when they went to see Pharaoh, who was doing the speaking? The very same Moses. Moses said, the God of Israel says, let my people go. Because God will strengthen you. And that fear that you have is because you're depending on yourself to overcome the challenge. But God is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. In 2 Corinthians 12, chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. And this was Paul that was writing these words. He says, Your, my weakness is made perfect. God's power is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest in me. That's why when we are weak, we actually then can be strong because we depend on God. Jeremiah 32 verse 17 says, O oh Lord, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched hand. Surely nothing is too difficult for you. So paralysis of fear needs to be taken back to scripture that nothing is too difficult for God. And you need not worry about your inadequacies. You need to live life in the present to the fullest and depend on God for each moment. Do not fear your inadequacies, but rejoice in God's abundant supply. And thirdly, the other barrier that's a red flag is the prison of the mind. It is said by Charles Swindoll, a Christian author, that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. So sometimes our mind imprisons us and causes us to think through things as if they're not possible, as if they're not for us. And we feel that in that prison, we cannot move. But I'd like to reflect on two examples of people who are in a physical type of prison, but my goodness, they seized the opportunity God gave them and they accomplished the purpose God had called them to. This very book we're reading in Ephesians was written when Paul was in prison. It was written around uh, AD 62 when Paul was imprisoned in Rome and he was writing to the church in Ephesus to help them realize the incredible grace God gives them and that by relying on him, they can stand firm and they can succeed. I also reflected on the life of the former president of South Africa, the late Nelson Mandela, who was in prison for 44 years, who went to prison at 27 years. A 27-year-old is at the height of their dream of what they want to do. He gets in prison for 44 years. Does he let the prison close his mind? No. There are 250 published letters, not all the letters, but 250 of the letters he wrote in prison have been published. His autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, was written while he was in prison. He learned Afrikaans, the language of his oppressors, while he was in prison. He did his law degree while he was in prison. Indeed, our minds should not imprison the opportunities God has given us. 
Dr. Caroline Leaf, this is a medical doctor, has written a book called, and she's a Christian, a book called Switch On Your Brain, an excellent book. And she writes there that the way we think can change the physical nature of our brain, that the actual physical formation of your brain is affected by how you think. So as we consciously direct the right thinking to our brain, we wear out the toxic patterns and we replace them with healthy thoughts that change the physical nature of the brain towards what you want to achieve. In a sense, Dr. Caroline Leaf is saying, science is proving that there's a relationship between the thoughts and reality. And the Bible tells us what to do about our mind. It says, don't copy the behavior and the patterns of this world in Romans chapter 12, verse two, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will know what the good, pleasing and perfect will of God is. So let's break away from being imprisoned in our mind and change our perspective on the things around us in the world. God has not given us a spirit of timidity or of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. So is God opening doors of opportunity for you today? What are you going to do with this? What is keeping you from making the most of the opportunities you have today? Hard times can be a blessing because in those days of moral compromise and of difficulty, those are the times of incredible opportunities for God to show his power through you. When the world around us seems to be going into confusion and panic, we have an incredible opportunity to show what God can do in us through the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Indeed, the darker the night, the brighter the sun shines. So when you're in those dark moments, that's indeed when God wants to stand and brightly shine through you. God desires for you and me to live an abundant life today, to see all there is to see, to do all there is to do, to experience all that life has to offer. But we need to train our minds to keep focused on God's presence and on this present day, so that with each day, we are growing and applying ourselves to the opportunities God gives us. So in conclusion, Ephesians is telling us three broad things. You are the light of the world and you need to live as the children of light in verse 10 of chapter five. We were once in darkness, but today we are being called to live as children of light. And if any of you today has not ever come to the light of Jesus Christ, this is the chance he's giving you. For you to live abundantly today, it is important that you have a personal relationship with God so that you can walk in the light of the Lord. And as we read in the beginning, if you hear his voice today, do not harden your heart. And as we close, we'll be giving you an opportunity to give your heart to the Lord that you can walk in his light. But number two, find out what pleases the Lord. How is it God would have you live? Seek to do his will in all you're doing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, as is written in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. And he will show you the path to take. He will give you the desires of your heart. And thirdly, we're being told in Ephesians, wake up, arise. God has even given you gifts and talents and opportunities. And God wants you to use those today for his glory and for his pleasure. And that verse goes on to talk about, awake all you who are asleep and arise from the dead. Paul is not talking to non-believers. This is the church in Ephesus, but they are Christians living as if they are dead. We need to be Christians living as if we all are alive because God is enabling us to stand in the great heights and to live a successful life today where success is not defined by the world's definition, but it's defined by the abundant life of love, joy, and peace that Jesus gives. We reflect back on the passage that was expounded last week and which was again read today on Isaiah 43. When the Israelites were in Babylon, God promised them a new beginning. And in verse 14, he says, see, I am doing a new thing. This is written in the present continuous tense. He's not saying I did a new thing. He's not saying one day in the future, I'll do a new thing. He said, I am continually doing a new thing. And just like the hymn we sang earlier, it says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Each of us has a new morning and a new opportunity to have a new beginning every day. God promises to create water in the wasteland, a stream in the wasteland, to make a way. You may be feeling lost or confused. You've lost your job. Uh, you've lost a loved one. 
you're in a state of being alone, you don't have resources for what you want to do, God is saying, I will make a way in the wilderness because I am doing a new thing. So as sure as the sun rises every day, we can be confident that God's mercies are new each day. They're not based on how good we are or on what we've done, but on his steadfast character. It is who he is. He wants to have compassion for us each morning. So as we come to close and pray, remember what we said in the beginning, that opportunity is found opening the door when I am at the door knocking. The young people say, YOLO, you only live once. And that's their slogan for making the most of the day. And Jesus in John 10, 10 says, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. He wants to free you from the penalty of sin by bringing you salvation, to free you from the power of sin by helping you overcome those barriers and to free you from the presence of sin when we finally go to heaven. So today, if you're hearing God calling you into salvation, heed his voice today and not tomorrow. Today, if you're a Christian but who's not been walking according to the purposes of God and you're not enjoying the abundant life today, God is calling you to submit to him that you would have the abundant life of peace, love, and joy today. Today, God is calling you to look at the gifts and talents and opportunities he's given you and asking you that you would use them to glorify him and to please him in every regard. So may the Lord help us to walk circumspectfully in our lives, to walk carefully, to walk wisely, and to seize the moment of every day that he gives to us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are such a great God who gives such new opportunities even to us who have squandered many opportunities in the past. Lord, forgive us when we have not done what we ought to have done. Forgive us when days have slipped by and weeks and months and years and we have allowed opportunities to slip. But we thank you because you're a God of new mercies every morning, a God of new opportunities every day. Father, won't you help us to arise and wake up and live today as you would have us live and that you would be glorified and pleased with our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Maybe you are there and uh, the Lord has spoken to you. And you want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, as Lucy did say. I invite you to make a personal commitment to give your life to the Lord this morning. If you're watching us live or on television, and you feel today is the day that the Lord has made for you and you want to give your life to Christ, please, I ask you in humility to just pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for speaking to me. I now give my life to you that you may be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins and accept me as your child. Forgive my past and help me to make use of today to begin anew with you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that my tomorrow will glorify you. I thank you for your salvation in Jesus' name. And God, we commend your people to you and pray, Father, that those who've heard this word and are in a relationship with you or are struggling in their walk with you, that you remember them, dear Lord. This morning we pray that you supply sufficient grace for every single person who is waiting on you now in their homes, listening to us in the open space driving or here in this sanctuary. Let's come through for those who have struggled to make some decisions that would free them. Today, Lord, we speak positivity that you release them, Lord, to make those correct decisions. Lord, there are those who have procrastinated. May you break the yokes and the bones of procrastination. There are those who have been held in the prison of fear. This afternoon, God, may you release fresh anointing and bring them out of the cocoons of fear. Lord, there are those whose minds have been imprisoned, who always think that everything is impossible. Lord, they've wanted to begin a business. They've always seen it as impossible. They've always wanted to start a project. They've always been held back by these negative thoughts. Lord, there are people who've, 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 who've thrived in fear and saying that they cannot. In the name of Jesus Christ, this afternoon, God, may you free their minds. Holy Spirit of God, we speak freedom. We speak deliverance now. Release the deliverance, Lord, across the airwaves, across the oceans, right in this sanctuary. Deliver your people and set them free, dear Lord, that today they may commit to you and that you may hold their hands up and help them through the journey of life. We commend them to you in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please, if you'd want more prayers, um, we would want, would encourage you to call our prayer line, number 0110-095-533. That is 0110-095-533. One of our clergy will be happy to pray with you. Amen. We now invite all of us uh, here and online to worship God with our giving. And it's part of our expression of obedience to God. And please may you prepare your giving that we may give. For all your tithes and thanksgiving offerings, uh, organ restorations, please use the pay bill number 303036. Um, projected for those who are here and online for those who are watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you'd want to honor your pledge towards the CTC ahead of our fundraiser on the 8th of next month, or you want to make any one-off donation or any kind of giving, or you want to pay for the CTC t-shirts, please use the pay bill number 303035 towards the CTC project. May you prepare your giving so that we may bless them even as you give. Thank you, Father, for the abundance of your provision. And now, as we worship you with our giving, may you accept these that we now give to you. May you bless them and cause all that our hands do 
to multiply to the glory of your name. So receive our giving now, both virtually and here, with thanksgiving from our hearts in Jesus' name. Just as the choir leaders in singing that anthem, just a little change. If you don't have an m and you have cash and you feel you don't want to be left out, we will now give at the back. The ushers will be at the back. Uh, just walk pole pole in a carefully um, arranged social distance manner and give your giving at the back. May we stand as the choir leads us in singing the anthem. Sorry. Creator and Keeper, giver of sunshine and rain, all that we are and all that we have is yours. In gratitude we offer to you for your work, this gift from the produce of our firms, businesses and employment. Accept and bless them for the furtherance of your work here in the cathedral and beyond. Bless and establish your people in their daily work and multiply their blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's good to see all of you come for the service. Thank you for coming. We continue to encourage people to come to church. Church is safe, and we still have a lot of space which you can sit. 
come with your children and enjoy a good service. The notice says we publish the bands of marriage between the following persons. Martin Kemori Ngigi of PCA Kikuyu and Joan Jerry Mbudhia of All Saints Cathedral. Vincent Ondieki Odor and Jacinta Gatiri, both of All Saints Cathedral. This is the third time of announcing. Alec, Alex on Somu Mayaka of Wupendo SDA and Tatali Adisa Okwara of the Church of Good Shepherd, Alvin Otieno Okello and, Fam and Emily Acheng Onyango, both of All Saints Cathedral, Kevin Gitao Gadesha and Agnes Sajina Mbeye, both of All Saints Cathedral. This is the second time of announcing. Then Isaac Wambogo Kironji and uh, Yvonne Mwende Mulandi, both of pa pa Parkland Baptist Church. This is the first time of announcing. If you know any just cause or impediment, why this person should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are required to declare that to us. The following are our services. The 8 a.m. service, which is a congregational service at the auditorium. You're welcome. The next one is the congregational death service at the St. Philip's Chapel. It is at 11 a.m. Then we have the 10 a.m. Congregational Youth Service at the auditorium. It is running concurrently with this one. Okay, actually it has ended, sorry, it has ended, it wasn't concurrent. Then we have this particular one which is at 11, which is both congregational and live service. You are free to follow us on virtual, but also to come uh, for the service. We will have another one at 1.15, which is both congregational and live service. It is mainly youth service, but it's also open for anybody who would like to come and attend. Today, I will be here at 6, launching the 6 o'clock service. We welcome you to follow us virtually for the 6 o'clock, but also it will be open for congregational service. So at six, those who would like to come for the service feel welcomed to come and worship with us. Kindly, it's always good to register. It, help, it helps us to plan ahead. But if you are not able for one reason or the other, kindly feel free to come and you'll be uh, processed. The last two is on Green Anglicans. Uh, yesterday we celebrated the Green Anglicans Day uh, by planting trees, but here in the cathedral we want to make it a big thing as part of our CTC uh, movement of our children, and we want to have uh, uh, a nursery here at the cathedral. If you'd like to donate a tree, which is 100 shillings, you can give to 30, 30, 35, which is CTC. Later, we'll be selling them. We also encourage Christians to give us physical trees. Uh, bring them here. We'll make a nursery and be able to even sell them as we make our world greener. The last one is a T CTC. The month of October is dedicated for prayers and fasting. Uh, the daily prayer calendar for you and your family is in our website and other platforms. Kindly follow every day and let it guide you in your prayer. Then on the 8th of November, we had planned to have a number of uh, 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 fundraisings, uh, but because of the COVID, it wasn't possible. Therefore, we will combine all the fundraisings uh, for the November the 8th, and we target to raise 65 million so that we can see our roofs now being erected, uh, completed as we go into the finishing phase. Kindly be prepared uh, to give and give and give towards the CTC so that we 
uh, can finish the project. I request that we now stand for the final blessing. And after the recessional hymn, we'll request the congregation to be seated so that you can be guided by the ushers. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of children and the teenagers. We pray that you may grant us strength and wisdom to train them in the way they should go, in the word and deed. Bless our efforts as we mobilize the resources required to build the CTC. May we find joy in partnering with you in fulfilling your mission to the children and future generations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.